Okay, so I'm just going to introduce our speaker today. We have Dr. Kara Booker from the Institute for Economic and Social Research. Um, no, I'm reading the wrong thing. It's the Institute for Social and Economic Research. And she's going to introduce the youth and young adult data in the Understanding Society. So I'm going to hand over now to Kara. Thank you, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, so as was mentioned, I'm going to um, describe to you what's in these two different questionnaires and modules. And so briefly, my outline is to give you an introduction of the two samples, um, give you a description of the questions that are found in each of them, and then the questions that are commonly found in both of the um, youth sample and the module, a little bit about where to find the data documentation, how to access the data, and then give you a, an example of what can be done using this data. And then we'll have a little bit of discussion. So the youth questionnaire is given to all 10 to 15 year olds in the household. Um, they're invited to take this pen and paper questionnaire. Um, they are given, they give verbal cons consent as well as their parents or um, the, the responsible adult. Um, there is an attempt to have the youth complete the questionnaire either in the separate room from their parents who are also completing their own or in the same room but separately and giving the um, youth as much privacy as possible. Um, and there are some questions that are asked annually and other questions that are asked on a rotating basis. And I will um, be indicating where, how that's done um, later on. So currently we have seven ways of data available through the um, UK Data Service. And here is just a table that shows you how many 10 to 15 year olds participated in each wave, um, the percentage of male across um, all of the waves, and the breakdown by gender, or, I'm sorry, the breakdown by age, um, 10 through 15 in each of the waves. And you can see that pretty consistently there's about 16 to 17 percent. Sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down, but it's pretty consistent across all waves. The young adult module is a sample of 16 to 21 year olds who are included in the adult questionnaire and receive additional questions. Um, this uh, module was first implemented in wave two and in wave two the questions were included in the main face-to-face -face portion of the questionnaire. However, in wave three most of the questions are included as part of the self-completion part of the questionnaire and there are still a few questions that are included in the face-to-face -face that are just given to 16 and 21 year olds. The youth uh, young adult module was um, aimed to ask questions that were relevant to these, um, these young adults in the stage of their, their lives. So some of the questions are um, included in the youth questionnaire and then brought up to this age and some of them are specific um, for what this age group is going through. Again, some of the questions are asked annually and others are asked on a rotating basis and I will be indicating that. And here is a table of the young adult sample from age two, I'm sorry, from wave two through seven. Um, again, the breakdown by gender and age shows you um, how it goes across the waves. Um, just a um, quick note about both of these tables, the percentages are weighted percentages and the numbers are actually raw numbers. Um, if you have any questions about how many individuals are in the um, take part in numbers of waves, I can give that to you afterwards. So next I'm going to talk about the youth questionnaire um, and questions that are only included in the youth questionnaire. So these are um, not um, included in um, the young adult module. Um, next to the questions, I put um, wave numbers, and this indicates in which wave these questions are asked. Um, if there are no wave numbers next to the question, 
Um, that means that they're asked in every wave, and I'll give an example on the next slide. Um, and I tried to place these into themes so you kind of get an idea of the broad categories of questions that are asked. So of course, first we ask about demographics. Um, and so as I was saying, gender and age are asked at every wave. However, religion and ethnicity are only asked in the odd number waves. Our next category is school, and under here we have, um, we ask students, or sorry, young people, um, how often they play truants, how often they misbehave, um, how often others misbehave, how they get to school, so their mode of transportation, whether they walk, take the bus, whether they're driven, um, whether they ever get homework, and if they do, how often, um, how many evenings during the school term, how many hours a week do they spend doing homework, how many hours during the weekend do they spend doing homework, and if they get helped doing their homework, and if they do, from whom, and this um, can be parents, siblings, grandparents, anybody in the house, other people. And again, um, there are questions here that are asked every way, for example, the truancy question, and then there are questions that are asked in um, alternate waves. Our next group is educational attainment aspirations, and these questions ask about the importance of doing well or what they would like to do once they hit 16 or when they go to college and university. Um, and the last two questions I believe are open-ended, um, and these are asked at every wave. Next we have civic engagement, cultural and leisure activities. So these are asked in even waves, and they just ask whether they are, um, how often do they go to any of the following or participate in any of the following activities. And these responses range from most days to almost never. So, um, for example, they'll ask how often do they um, watch live sports, and then they can answer accordingly. The next section is culture, and this is basically, um, except for one question about, um, or for a couple questions about books and um, and other cultural events. So they ask about the number of books that they've read in the past month, and that's an open-ended. They can write in the number. And then how often do they do the following things, discussing books or TV programs, um, whether their parents or other adults buy them books or take them to museums or sporting events or theater, um, dance performance or classical music. And again, these questions are asked on even years. The next group of questions covers technology use. So they're asked, um, youth are asked whether there is a computer at home. Um, and if there is, do they use them, do they use that computer to connect to the internet or to play games? Um, do they have a games console at home? And then if they do, how many hours they play on it on a normal school day? Um, if they play multiplayer games online, and then how many hours are spent watching television, and whether they own a mobile phone. Um, and just for clarification, um, the television question um, on a school day is asked at every year, uh, for, at every wave, um, and the question about weekend watching is only asked on even waves. Um, okay. The next group of questions asks about food consumption, um, the number of portions of fruits and vegetables consumed per day, how often they eat fast food, or how often they eat crisps, fizzy drinks, or sweets in a normal week. Um, and as you can see, for um, example, the fresh fruit and vegetable questions, um, they kind of changed pattern. Um, most of the questions will either be asked in um, even waves or odd waves, and this one was asked in the first wave and then goes to even waves. Um, and this could be um, due to space issues in the questionnaire or to match questions um, that are asked of the adults so that you can look at um, consumption within families or as they get older, it will match with their being asked when they turn 16 to 21. Our next set of questions asks about body image and general health. So they're asked about um, self-reported height and weight, 
and what their body perceptions are. So they're given a um, figure and ask what their current body perception is. And this goes from a skinny figure to a heavier weight figure. And they're also asked whether they ever diet or try to lose weight. And the general health um, question is just a, in general, how would you say your health is? And the responses range from excellent to poor. And these are given in even wave um, data collections. Next, we have alcohol consumption. So we ask about friends who drink regularly, whether the youth regularly drinks, whether they drink um, one or two drinks nearly every day, four or five drinks, either nearly every day or nearly every weekend, whether they've ever been drunk, um, and this is whether they've ever been drunk in their lifetime, or whether they've ever been drunk in the past year. So these are two different questions. Again, there's different patterns to these questions, so some are asked in even years and some are asked in odd years. We also ask about drug use, um, and we ask about um, how difficult they think it would be to get cannabis and how harmful they believe certain um, drug or substance use behaviors are to them. So for um, example, how harmful they believe smoking occasionally is or drinking five or more drinks each weekend, um, trying ecstasy, taking meth or amphetamines regularly. Um, and for all of these harm questions, the responses are four items. Um, and there is a don't know column. It's um, no risk, slight risk, moderate risk, or great risk. There are other alcohol and drug questions, but I will be talking about those later. Next, we have sports participation. So youth are asked how often they play sports, do aerobics, or some other activity to keep fit in um, wave one, and then it switched to even waves. And additionally, in the even waves, they're asked about the type of exercise they do. And these are all of the different types, and they can check all that apply um, for the types of exercise that they do. The next um, category is the well-being category. So every year, um, they are asked about their happiness with different aspects in life. And this is on a 0 to 6 scale. Um, and they're asked about whether they are um, very happy or very unha um, too very unhappy about these different, these six different areas. In the odd years, um, they are also given the strengths and difficulties questionnaire, the SDQ, which is a questionnaire um, that looks at um, difficulties. It can be um, subscaled into internalizing and externalizing um, ex, uh, difficulties. The next set of questions started in wave three and then continue in odd wave years. Um, questions regarding money and paid work. So what do they usually do with your money? And this is any money, um, money that's given to them, money that um, they earn. Um, and then they are asked whether they did any paid work in the last week, how many hours, and to um, estimate or give their total pay. Um, and then there are questions surrounding caring, so whether they look after anyone who lives in the household on a regular basis, and if yes, who, who that is, and they can indicate whether it's a parent, a sibling, grandparents, um, et cetera. How many hours per week they care for that person, again, open-ended, and um, whether they miss school in order to care. And finally, we have some questions that I um, kind of have subcategories, but I couldn't really fit them into necessarily their own themes. Um, and this is whether they receive help with um, housework, whether they have a steady boyfriend and girlfriend, and the um, response to that is just yes or no, um, whether they participate in any antisocial or criminal behavior, um, a little bit about their neighborhood, so whether they like living in their neighborhood and whether they would feel safe walking around um, alone after dark, um, and some 
brief questions about their political attitudes, uh, which political party would they vote for, and how interested are they at this point in politics. So that sums up the questions that are asked only in the youth questionnaire. Um, the next set of questions I'm going to talk about are questions that are only found in the young adult module. So in the identity demographics, um, they are asked about sexual orientation. Um, they will be asked in all odd waves. Sexual orientation was asked for every everybody in the adult questionnaire at wave three, and it's now only being asked repeatedly amongst 16 to 21 year olds. We have education and future career expectations. So um, young adults are asked what age they, are, they expect to leave home, what type of job they would like to do once they leave, um, either school or full-time education or training. Who do they get career advice from? And there's a long list of individuals that they might seek career advice from. And the importance of several um, issues listed below to their future occupation. So how important is job security or um, whether the job is interesting, whether they get time with family, etc. And again, these are um, given in different um, different numbers of waves and in different intervals. Next we have future career and family expectations. So we ask them what their likelihood, what they think their likelihood of um, any of these following events might take place in their life. So gaining a training or university place, um, being successful, being long-term unemployed, um, whether they think they will get married or have a child or have several children. Um, the next question is about their sense of self, so how important do they think the following are, are to who they are themselves? So how important is their occupation or their ethnic background, their family, their gender, their age, their stage in life? So those are the questions that are asked of the um, young adults that are only asked of the young adults that are not asked of the um, youth. And this final section that I'm going to go through are questions that are included in both the youth questionnaire and the young adult module. And next to each of these questions I've indicated based on the colors that you see here um, what waves those questions are asked. So sometimes they're asked in similar um, waves, sometimes they're asked in different um, patterns across the two um, questionnaires and modules. So um, both the youth and the young adults are asked about their future plans, um, the age that they want to get married or have children, the age they expect to leave home, and what their future plans are. And again, this is an open-ended question. And you can see here, there are some that are asked in the same way, for example, the future plans, and then some that are asked in different ways, for example, the age expect to leave at home, the young adults after wave three are asked at every wave, while the youth are only asked in um, odd number waves. There are questions about their social lives, so the number of close friends. Um, again, here um, I just want to reiterate that if there is a missing category, so for the number of friends I'm giving you, the young adults are asked in waves four, five, and seven, but there's nothing for the youth. Um, that means that the youth are asked this question at every wave. Um, while the young adults have a pattern to their way. So if there's a missing category, that just means that those people, um, sorry, the, that question is asked at every way for that category of person. I hope that makes sense. Um, so we ask for the number of close friends. We ask whether they have a social media profile. And if they do, how many hours they sp spend interacting or chatting with friends per week. Um, the number of times they've eaten a family meal, um, whether they feel supported by their family, who they would turn to if upset within their family, um, or it could be um, a non-family member, and the times that they were out after 9 p.m. without their parents knowing 
um, where they where they were without reporting to their parents. Um, the next questions are the questions that are commonly asked of both groups about cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption. So for the smoking variable, they um, are asked whether they ever smoke and if they do, the frequency of smoking per week. Again, this is asked every year of the, of the youth and only in waves three for the young adults. Um, and for alcohol consumption, they're asked whether they've had, ever had a whole drink their frequency of drinking and um, their frequency of drinking is within the past month, um, whether they've ever binge drank and also within the past month, and whether they've been drunk in the past month. And if you can remember back to what I said about the youth, we have similar questions here, but um, the young adults weren't asked whether they had ever been drunk in their lifetime or ever been drunk in the past month. Um, I'm sorry, in the past year. Um, both of them are asked whether they've ever been drunk in the past month. Um, again, here are some drug use beha um, behaviors. So um, both parties are asked whether they've ever tried um, glue or solvents, cannabis, or other illegal drugs. And if they have, how many times have they ever used these illegal drugs? On the even number waves, um, they are given the Rosenberg short form self-esteem scale, um, and these are the eight items included in that scale that um, can be added up um, to give a total score. The next set of questions ask about their relationships with their parents, so how often they quarrel with their parents. How often do they talk with their mother or father, whether their parents show any interest in how they do at school, whether they attend school evenings, and if they have a step-parent in their house, how is their relationship with that person? We ask a few questions about um, bullying. Um, this one, this set of questions is about bullying between siblings. So we ask them whether they have a sibling, and if they do, how often do the si does the sibling hit, kick, or punch the person in question who's taking the, um, the, the questionnaire, who's filling out the questionnaire, uh, whether they take their belongings, call them names, or make fun of them. And then we ask that person, how often do they do those things to their siblings? So here you can um, determine whether the individual is either a bully or being bullied or both. And similarly, um, for any um, individual that's still in school, we ask about whether they get physically bullied or bullied in other ways. And then how often do they physically bully others or bully others in other ways? And both of these um, are asked in odd number um, waves. So that is the end of all of the questions that are in either the youth questionnaire or the young adult module. Um, they're, again, broken down. Some of them are only in one or the other, um, but there are many that are included in both, um, which is very good for longitudinal studies because then you can look at how things change as um, these young people become young adults. So the next few slides are about um, data documentation and how to access the data. Here I've given you um, the websites to um, Understanding Society, the main website, the website to the data set documentation where you can find more information about these questions, um, the, again, the waves that they're included in, the percentages, breakdown, um, et cetera. And also there's a link to the questionnaires if you want to see exactly how those questions are stated at each wave. In order to access the data, um, here's the website for the UKDS. This will take you straight to the Understanding Society um, page. Um, and the youth data are all contained in their own data set. So it's A underscore youth through, um, currently we have through wave seven, so G underscore youth. Um, the young person module is included in the adult 
questionnaire data sets. So those are the A underscore and REST files or through the G underscore and REST files. Um, and all of the young person module um, are questions are prefixed with a um, with the wave identifier, so that's A through G, um, and then there's an underscore, and then the next two letters should be YP, and that indicates um, that it was given to the young person, and then you have the variable name after that. So sometimes you'll see the same um, wave identifier and just the variable name, that means that it was given to everybody, but if it has a YP right after the underscore, then it was given to young, um, young people. So one of the advantages of understanding society is that we take, um, we try and collect data from all members of the household, which means that we can link the parents' um, information to the children. Um, and to do this, you have the person number and the personal identifier of the parent, which is included in the youth data set um, and also is in the um, main um, uh, data file for the young adult, um, and therefore you can link the parents to the youth. And this can be done using the household identifier um, and the person number um, or the person personal ID um, and the wave. There is a code, um, a STATA code do file that you can find in the syntax file on the UKDS um, page that I provided earlier. So if you click on the syntax and you go to, um, it'll take you to where all the syntaxes are. There is a one that's called um, parent-child linkage, I believe. Um, and that will just give you the code on how to link across um, between the youth um, data sets and the interest file data sets. So just um, quickly, next is a table um, that gives you a roof a brief um, look at how many mothers and fathers can be linked to children um, across the waves. And this is the youth um, data set only, not the young people. So you can see we have about um, going from 4,500 mothers to about 3,400 mothers um, and um, 3,000 fathers to about 2,500 fathers. Um, the numbers are not going to add up to the number of children. Um, because um, you can, o I believe you can only link to parents that complete um, the complete the survey. So if they don't, if they're not in the survey at all, then you're not going to have data on them. And um, this was came from also parents who only completed the self completion portion. So you get a bit of drop off there. Um, again, you some youth only live with one parent, and so therefore you're not going to have um, any data on the on the non resident parents. And some um, youth don't live with any parents. So if they live with a grandparent or with an aunt and uncle, they are not included in this data set. You can link to them, but it's a little bit trickier. So briefly, I'm going to give an example of some research linking parents and youth data. And this comes from a paper that I published a few years ago looking at limiting long-term illness and subjective well-being within families. Um, this is a cross-sectional analysis, so this is not um, longitudinal, but just gives you an idea of what you can do with the data. So we wanted to look um, at whether there is a relationship between a parent being ill and the youth's well-being score. So we looked at the youth's SDQ score, um, and we found that if there was a ill parent in the house, um, then the youth were um, more likely to have more difficulty. So they had higher SDQ score. So the downward arrows mean that there is a, um, a negative association. Um, if we added in caring, whether the parents cared for the child, um, again, there was, there was still an association between whether the parent was ill, but there is also an association between whether that child was being cared for and having more difficulties. And then we added um, the um, mental functioning, um, mental functioning of the parents. So we have the parents being disabled and whether they have um, poor mental functioning. And here we found that um, 
having a parent with poor mental functioning who is also um, disabled was much worse for the um, the difficulties. The, the child had more difficulties if their parent also had poor mental functioning. So it was a combination of being disabled and having um, poor mental functioning for the mental health of the um, the young person. And then we wanted to have a look at the reverse um, um, relationship. So if there was a young person with brain, um, what was the effect or what was the relationship with the parents' um, GHQ score, which is their um, generalized anxiety score. And here we can see that having a um, young person in the household that required caring, which is how we um, identified this person, because um, which is why the caring for the child is not significant, um, was associated with a lower um, parental um, GHQ score, which meant that they were more, um, they had more anxiety. And if the youth total um, SDQ total difficulty score was high, so if they if that youth had more total difficulties, then their parents had an even greater drop in their um, anxiety levels. So this is an example of kind of some of the data that you can do um, linking parent and child together. And of course, you can do this across a number of ways. You can include siblings, um, both older and younger. Um, and so I hope I've given you a good, um, good look at what can be done with Understanding Society Youth Data and the Young Adult Module. So now I think we're going to open up for a bit of discussion. Um, so thank you very much. Here is my email address if you have any questions. Again, the link to the Understanding Society um, website. And if you're using Twitter, here is the Understanding Society Twitter um, ID. So we'll open it up for questions now. OK, thank you very much. That's really interesting. I know the survey fairly well, but there's always new things to <laughs> learn. So that is good. Um, if you have any questions, you have a chat window which should show on the right-hand side of your screen. So please do type any questions in there while we just give you a chance to do that. Let's have a look at some of the other things that you can find. So if you want to access the data and you haven't already, Let's see if we can get the internet to play ball. Um, here we go. Okay, so let's have a look. So we can just type in, say, understanding society. Oops. If I could type, it would really help. And then we can have a look at the website. So. It really is very easy to find, um, and you can navigate, as Kara said, there's data and document, uh, documentation. You can find all the questionnaires, everything that you need. Um, and we always recommend to users of any data set, before you get started, do have a look through the questionnaires and the user guides. There's lots and lots of useful information in there. Um, so we've just got a couple of questions coming in, which is great. So the first one, any questions about mental health? So no, the only questions that we have that are, are about well-being, essentially. So it's the SDQ um, and the happiness questions. We don't have any um, specific questions about mental health. Um, can we break these youth person samples down by regions and smaller geographical scales? So there are included in, I think it's in the household um, data set. You will get a government office region um, variable and you will, yes, so you'll get a government data office or government office region variable. Smaller geographical scales, you have to get a special license in order to get access to the LSOA data. Yeah, there's a number of different geographical 
um, areas that you can get through the special license and the best way to have a look at which one you need is to pop on to the UK data service website find this series record hopefully the internet will play ball and we can have a look now I'm going to cheat because I know the number um, so we'll just have a look so you can just type in the search understanding society or the series number so this is the main end user license one which as Kara said this the government office region in there now if you have a look at the series record for this bear with me the internet always goes a bit slowly when I'm demonstrating something live so you can see here there are a number of different special license versions and there's a whole host of different geographical areas that you can select there are obviously a few sort of additional conditions attached to special license you will need to fill out um, a proposal form which you submit to us at the UK data service and then we send it over to the understanding society team for approval but it's usually a fairly sort of simple process um, but we will of course if you want to make any applications we will guide you through okay um, the next question is whether we ask the young people to consider themselves to have a disability physical or intellectual ability the young people themselves we don't ask disability questions um, it's not until you get into the age 16 to 21 and then older do we ask disability questions. So no, we don't. Um, is the technology use question only covered in the youth module and not in the young adults module? Is there similar data apart from social media available for young adults? No. So unfortunately, we don't ask young adults about um, computers or gaming. We really should. Um, I would suggest every, every few years they open up um, the questionnaires for consultation. So if you have any ideas about questions that should be asked, um, keep your eye on the main Understanding Society page because I think consultations will be um, recorded or um, put up on there when they come for the next um, consultation for questions that should be um, asked in any of the questionnaires. Are there questions about financial savings by youth or young adults? So the young adults also get all of the questions that are asked of all of the adults. And I think there are financial savings questions in the main questionnaire. So you will be able to link the young adults to savings questions. Um, the, at this point, there are no savings questions in the youth. Um, and I'm not sure if there are any plans on including that. Are there any questions about young people's use of social media, in particular its impact on their well-being? So the only questions we have right now on social media is whether they, is how many hours they interact on social media. Um, chatting, um, I should say, not um, watching or posting or any of that. Um, and then its impacts on their well-being, um, not that specific question you can um, I've done some research that looks at that, but we don't specifically ask whether they think their um, interaction with social media impacts their own well-being. So the only sexual identity questions that we ask is the question that's asked um, of the young adults, um, so the 16 to 21 year olds, and that just asks them to identify their sexual orientation, um, and that is given as um, heterosexual, gay or lesbian, um, bisexual, other, and prefer not to say. Um, what disability definitions do you use those for question? Um, so the disability question is a two-part question. They're asked whether they have a limitation or disability that they think will last more than 12 months, and if they do, um, they're asked what that disability is. Um, they're given a set, I think, of 12 different um, categories they can check, or they can check other or none of the above. Um, and these range from mobility problems to problems with their eyes to problems socializing, etc. Um, you can find more information about that question 
in the data documentation. Um, are there any plans to ask questions about gender identity beyond male and female? Um, I really hope so. I'm going to very much start pushing that we do not include a binary um, gender question. However, um, if it does change, it's not going to be for a while. Um, I think that um, I think that the census might be changing how they ask gender, and if they do, then uh, we will have much more push to change how we ask gender. So let's hope that we can change that. Um, do you ask technology use for normal adults? I don't believe we do. Uh, I think I don't think so. I think it's only young adults. Again, the, something else that uh, we we should try and ask, but we are very much limited by space and time. So it's very difficult to ask um, all of these questions of everybody. Is it possible to narrow by sexual orientation of parents? Yes. So um, <laughs> this is a bit controversial because all of the individuals in wave three who completed the self-questionnaire or self-completion portion of the questionnaire were asked sexual orientation. If you want to take sexual orientation as stable, then you can um, take the sexual orientation of the parents at wave three. Um, however, if you believe that it's fluid, then it's a bit more, um, it's a bit harder to then take wave three and, and take it out for several waves afterwards. But yes, they were asked, um, everyone, every adult was asked at wave three what their sexual orientation was. Um, how do you guarantee the recall accuracy? For example, would most of the youth be able to access how many hours they spent engaging with social media, etc.? That's a very good question. Um, I don't know how we can assess it accurately. I think, though, that if you kind of look at our data compared to other questionnaires that ask similar questions of similar age adult or young, young people, we get pretty much the same answers. Um, also, if you're looking at trends across age, you can definitely see age trends, and that's been shown in several different studies. So I think that um, this is always a problem, um, especially when you're asking younger people or asking anybody really to recall how much they're doing anything. Um, but these are also questions that are um, banded, so it's um, not open, open-ended. Um, so the responses to these range from zero hours, I think it's one to, two, one to three hours, three to five hours, seven, or no, no, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. Um, one to two hours, no, that's right, three to five hours um, or seven or more hours. You have to look up the um, responses, but they don't, um, they are banded, so it, there's a top end to that question. Could adverse child experiences questions be incorporated into the survey in the future? Uh, it's definitely something that you could advocate for. Again, um, consultations for questionnaire questions come up every few years. So if you can um, respond to them and make a case, um, there, um, there's a possibility that those questions could be added into future surveys. Um, I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball in here, but we do have an innovation panel of Understanding Society that is about 1,500 people, includes young um, youth and young people, um, and that you can include, um, it's used for experiments. Um, so you can, um, there for that um, subset of people, Every year, there is a call to have questions included into that sample. So you could get those types of questions into a smaller um, sample that's also longitudinal, so it's the same people across many waves, um, but it won't be of the main um, survey. So if you want to see how specific questions will be answered or um, do an experiment on how you ask specific questions, um, you might want to look up the um, innovation panel. And again, all of that information is on the main um, Understanding Society page. You can link to all that. Um, do the technology questions include info on whether the children are watching alone with siblings or just a straight how, 
how many hours. It's just a straight how many hours. We don't ask who they're watching or what they're doing. We don't even ask whether they're doing other things while they're on social media or watching television. Uh, what's the rough mix of social class of participants in the youth and young adults module? Oh, gosh. Gosh, this is a, um, if I had other information in front of me, I would say the rough mix is probably for the youth. Um, oh, I can tell you that I think about 20 to 25 percent of their parents have a degree and about I want to say 15 to 20 percent, no, probably 15 percent of their parents have no qualifications and then the rest are kind of in the middle. That's the best I can give you at the moment off the top of my head. Um, if you want to look up um, more, you can look up in the, in the data. Uh, when will Wave 8 come out? So I think we aim to release uh, data every November. Um, so wave eight should be out in November. Um, are there equivalent questions asked to the parents? Yes. So the parents are also asked um, about how often they talk to their children or quarrel with their children. So that's asked of both the mothers and the fathers. Um, and there are also questions that are only asked specifically if they have, oh, if they have a 10-year-old, parents are asked about their parenting style. So you will have parenting style questions asked of parents with 10-year-olds. There are also parent development or child development questions, and those are asked about children who are either three, five, or eight. So depending on um, the age of the child, the parent is asked questions that are appropriate for that. So you will get some of those questions. Um, other than the question about religion, are there other questions about religious practices, um, subscriptions to sacred texts? So not among the youth, but in the um, adult sample, they do ask whether they attend religious services. Um, I think there's one other question about religion, and it's not coming to mind. Again, more of this information can be found in the data documentation, but there's no um, other questions for youth, but there are other questions for young adults. Okay, wow. So, um, some excellent questions there. Uh, oh, one more. Just and a in. data on attending, I'm sorry, what is GPS? GPs. Oh, GPs. Um, so not for the youth, but for the adults, um, they are asked whether they've, uh, they've asked whether they've been in the hospital. But I don't think they're asked whether they have gone to see a GP in the last year. I don't think. Okay, so, thank you. Um, any more questions for for Kara? She seems to know this inside out, which is very impressive. No, I think we've we've run out of questions for now. Uh, thank oh, you, Sarah. You're welcome. Just to remind you, Understanding Society's website has a whole host of of information on there. Do go and have a look through. Um, there's also some examples of research, I believe, uh -huh. on there as well, which if you're new to the survey might be helpful and interesting for you. There is also a user support forum on the website. I think that's under data and documentation. I think it is. We'll just show you where that here is. Yeah, there we go. So user support, you can go in here, then you can um, look at any current. Um, this is very useful because sometimes people ask the same question you do. So you can go and look and see how they've answered it. If you cannot find that um, your question, then you can go and add a question to, um, to this list. And they are very good at getting back to you and getting the people who know the information um, to answer your question. So this is a great um, source of information. 
And just quickly, I was talking about the innovation panel. Here is the innovation panel. And here's where you will find um, calls about the next um, the next wave and um, submitting a proposal to get questions included. So all of that information is here. Okay. I'm just going to double check, see if any other questions have come in. Uh, no, you're very welcome, all of you. Um, just one last question from mm -hmm. me. Have you got a um, mailing list that people can subscribe to to keep up to date with? I should know the answer to this, but I can't remember. I believe that there is an Understanding Society data list, or, sorry, mailing list. I probably should know this. Um, if, the, if you can't find it, I'm sure there is a um, place to contact them, and they will tell you whether there is one. There is a mailing list for ICER, um, and that will get, also give you information about Understanding Society. So I would encourage you to, um, to sign up for the ICER mailing list, and that will give you a lot of details about what's going on in Understanding Society as news comes out. Fabulous. Okay. So that was... A really informative webinar actually thank you very much Kara for coming over thank you and talking to all of us today just to remind you that we will make the slides available um, on our website and I think you'll put it on your website mm -hmm. as well that will hopefully be by the end of tomorrow we uh, will hopefully put the recording up probably sort of sometime next week just I always like to allow a little bit of extra time for that. Um, but apart from that, thank you very much, all of you, for joining us this afternoon. Hope you found that useful. And um, please do have a look on our the UK Data Service website for any future upcoming webinars that might be of use. <laughs>